Welcome to another Caring Support Podcast. Today we have a lovely guest and a rock star nurse at that. She is the lovely Monique Harding, who resides in the London area and works with St. Joe's Healthcare. This woman's awesome, and we're really happy to have her on our podcast this week. So, Monique, maybe you could have, uh, do us all a favor and please introduce yourself. Sure. Well, thank you for inviting me first off. So my name is Monique Harding. Uh, I've been a nurse for 17 years now. Um, I did my undergrad, my Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree at York University in Toronto. And then I completed my Master of Nursing at Western University here in London. Um, I have worked extensively in the mental health field right from the get-go had a number of different positions, starting from the emergency department, working in the community with the police, clinical investigator, and now I'm settled in London as a nurse educator for our mental health program. That's amazing. Um, did you say you were a clinical investigator? Yes. Wow. Okay, that sounds kind of, uh, you know. It crazy. sounds fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So, uh, Monique, welcome. It's really great to have you here. Uh, nice to hear such a great story as that and residing in our community because we are London based. So I'm going to turn it over to Kelly to ask the questions. So, Monique, what made you want to become an RN? So, you know, my mother was an RPN, actually. She was also a nurse and she worked in palliative care. And towards the end of high school, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. <laughs> and she suggested nursing. She said, it is such a broad field. You can do so much and you can work anywhere you want in the world. And she said, why don't you try that till you figure out what you want to do? And almost 20 years later, I'm still in it. That's awesome. And you really love it, obviously. You're passionate I do. about it. I do. Yeah. yeah, good for you. And you know, it's funny, it's moms are always right, aren't they? For some reason, <laughs> they always seem to be right. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's right about the fact that look at it now, like you're in high demand now. You could really just go anywhere you want. Oh, for you sure. Know? Yeah, and get what you want. You've been in the business long enough. You know the game. You know, uh, you know exactly what to do. So, you know, good on you. That's excellent. So many people think that nurses just work in hospitals and clinics. It's that it's that overwhelming, you know, all you see on TV is just, you know, nurses are in hospitals and clinics and that's it. But that is not the truth. So yeah. your career as an RN has been focused on mental health roles where you've worked on the mental health crisis team, the mobile crisis team, and even worked as a clinical investigator. So can you tell us what it was like working on those teams? Oh, so when I started, I... Um did what they called like the new grad initiative. And so you got a three month internship to work somewhere in nursing. And I got an email saying, hey, do you wanna come and work in our downtown emergency department? We will teach you how to be a psychiatric emergency nurse. And I thought, oh, that's amazing. So I got dedicated time to learn the ins and outs of my role. I did that for six years. And you saw everything working in the emergency department. We were dealing with people who had serious and persistent mental health issues, addiction, homelessness, um, social isolation, um, just a lack of resources. You were scrambling to kind of put together a plan for someone who just kind of showed up at your doorstep and they're like, help me. Right. So really had to learn to think on my feet. And then um, I moved over to our mobile crisis intervention team. So that's where they paired a mental health nurse with um, a member from the Toronto Police Service. And I would patrol with them and answer calls for what they called emotionally disturbed persons or EDPs. And I was doing on the spot risk assessments. So they are in the middle of their crisis. Sometimes people were actively harming themselves. I'd been to jumper calls. Um, sometimes you're comforting families. Um, it was big adrenaline rush when you're going lights and sirens to the call. But then when you get there, the police are like, okay, we'll do something. They're looking to you to be the expert. So really got to hone my assessment skills at critical thinking, just learning to trust my own judgment in those moments. And I always say there's a bit of a shelf life to crisis work. So going at 10 for a few years, I decided I'm going to try something different had the opportunity to work for the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario as a clinical investigator. 
And really what it was is that when people put in complaints um, about a doctor or surgeon in Ontario, someone has to deal with that. It is legislated that we need to address those concerns, right? So I would listen to what the issue was. Um, it would have to be in writing to of course. And I was just a little detective going through medical records, interviewing the complainants, the physicians, sometimes their legal representatives. Um, and basically what I found a lot of the time it was communication issues. So having my background in mental health, the team that I worked on dealt with concerns that had to do with mental health in some way. So knowing the illnesses, knowing how to, um, I was sometimes doing crisis work over the phone, <laughs> dealing with some of the complaints, um, also dealing with concerns from correctional facilities as well. Those were so interesting to me. I actually even got the opportunity to go to a correctional facility and help sort of sort out some complaints there. But it was really interesting because it really showed me how my mental health skills were transferable to something I had no idea even existed. Right. So um, that was a little bit of my journey there. All different roles, but all the baseline for it is mental health experience. Yeah, that's awesome. Good for you. That must have been a real wake up call when you first got into that and dealing with people like this, especially if you haven't really been exposed to it before. And then well, I was super right. sheltered. I was exposed <laughs> to everything. Yeah. <laughs> but that'd be good on you. It you embraced it and you learned and you adapted. And I mean, that's amazing. And and I, you know the other thing too, Monique, is right now we desperately need so many people to help with mental health issues. The pandemic just made the situation worse. And you know, so you know, that's amazing. You must be pretty valuable to everybody, you know. Um, sometimes it doesn't feel that way. You just kind yeah. of go into the work. Yeah. But you're right, um, working in the eMERGE into the beginning of the pandemic, we started to see a lot more everyday people, like yeah. the amount of anxiety that people were experiencing just with the unknown. Uh, people were just walking in off the street, coming in after work and just saying that they couldn't cope. So that was a bit of a shift that we saw, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a real... Um... I know a lot of people, a lot of my friends, some people that, that you didn't expect and they were struggling and, yeah. you know, and then we all, we know that right now, at that time when we were all going through it, you, you needed to reach out and to, to make people aware that you were there for them, you cared, you, um, you were willing to listen uh, without any judgment or anything, you know, so good for you. How has working on those teams influenced how you personally deal with your stress, um, anxiety, burnout, all that kind of fun stuff? Um, so first of all, I learned you can't bottle it up. You can't keep it in. You need to sort of verbalize what it is that you're experiencing. So being on the sort of health clinician end, um, people would come in because they had no one else to turn to. Right. And sometimes just having that conversation, I would see people's shoulders relax. Like you could physically see that just getting it out there um, was helpful to them. And I find it's the same thing uh, for me, kind of have my informal people that I go to to kind of vent sometimes, but also finding different outlets outside of work to de stress. So for me, my go to are Zumba and yoga, kind of one to get the energy up and one to bring it down. But um, it's really important as a healthcare clinician, like especially working in mental health, you can't let the work consume you. You have to find other outlets or else you'll find maladaptive ways to cope, right? So if you have those positive ways of coping right up, up, up front, um, it's really helpful uh, to rely on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting, Monique, uh, years ago, um, had a relationship that, you know, whatever, and. Um, you know, I was always a very kind person and compassionate and empath empathetic. And but I learned one of the greatest lessons I learned from that was safe boundaries. You had to know when you had to step back, when you had to say no, you had to because you still, you know, like you just can't help other people unless you're OK first. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you're quite the superstar nurse, that's for sure. <laughs> Your career has shifted in a different direction, and now you're more of a nurse educator. So can you tell us what it is that you do as a nurse educator, and then maybe what your favorite part of your job is now? 
Ooh, so um, right now as an educator, I oversee the onboarding and the education for new nursing graduates who come into our program, um, internal transfers, sometimes people who have no mental health experience at all. And I help to establish that baseline of what they can work with. So that's mainly through orientation where we go through the different mental health diagnoses, different concepts, you know, things like therapeutic relationships and communication, you know, the recovery model, um, the mental health act, you know, what's the legislation that guides what we do, right? So really laying that foundation for our new staff. And then for the existing staff that might, that education comes in the form of like in services or maybe helping more with some clinical skills that they might do um, every day. So really I'm just a support for all the new staff who come into the program, right? I'm sort of their go-to person if they need help or um, a little bit of an extra boost. Oh, and my favorite part, I love orientation because I like to see when people are, are excited to come into a new role. You know, they're excited to share, um, especially when people are coming in having some experience where they've worked with mental health clients to hear their stories. I feel like that's the best way to learn, right? Because you remember the story more than me just kind of rhyming off a few things about the diagnosis, right? If you can put a face to that experience it's really helpful and the discussion usually gets going and people kind of contribute and i i love that part <laughs> that's awesome and you know what i don't know if anybody's anybody's ever said that to me before or to us but i mean it, it's not just it's a great way for you to be able to be involved and help people that are are new mm -hmm. um which is great because you know a lot of times so much time productivity is lost when someone comes in and they don't feel at welcome they don't feel like people are appreciative of them being there so you know are they seen as a threat and, and ridiculous stuff like that mm -hmm. so yeah good on you that's awesome i i love it because when i did my internship years ago i loved it so much and i kind of feel like being involved in the orientation now and onboarding it's like paying it forward like let me help you get as good of an experience that i got when i started yeah absolutely so what advice do you have for nursing students who aren't sure what specialty they want to work in? Oh, nursing is so broad. And I would always say, don't let someone else dictate your journey. When I started, everyone kept saying, oh, you need to work in med surge. You know, if you don't work in med surge first, you're going to lose your skills. Um, I just use different skills, right? It's still nursing. It's just a different skill set. I don't throw on, I wasn't throwing on scrubs to go to work. I was throwing on a bulletproof vest. Right. And at the beginning of my nursing career as a new grad, I didn't know that job existed. Uh, when I went to apply to work on the psychiatric emergency team, I didn't know that job existed either. Right. There's so many things out there and nursing just continues to grow. If you find the area of nursing you like, you can really carve out a niche for yourself. Yeah. Awesome. I'm like, this is pretty amazing, uh, Monique. I, you know, you're very diversified. You've had so much experience, but you're still so keen and passionate about it. That's like, it's beautiful, really, and good for you. Oh, thank Love you. Love it. Yeah. What What keeps that passion going? You know, everybody has that that why or that one story that you know over their their career that has just pushed them to keep going no matter what. What is that why for you? Honestly, it, it kind of sounds so cliche coming from a nurse, but I like to help people, right? Why make things difficult? You know, there's this old saying that, you know, nurses eat their young, which I don't know where that came from. I didn't experience that when I started. Yeah. And I would never want someone who's newer to the field to come in and feel that way. Like, let's make people feel welcome. And if people can see that you enjoy your job, you're passionate about what you do, that is infectious. It rubs off on people, right? So we're just going to let it snowball and keep that momentum going for all the like future nurses coming up. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think there's a lot of times you see that kind of thing and people think, oh, this is when it's almost like a predisposition towards a negative attitude about it. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I'm a person that just loves to help people. A lot of people on our caring support team are, are that kind of person. And 
And so, you know, of course, with a nurse, like you guys are doing this to the nth degree. So, you know, I just love your attitude, Monique. It's beautiful. It really is. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to add like your your energy just shines through even even through video and just talking to you here. I'm sure it's going to shine through like even just on the podcast. Your energy is amazing. And I can definitely say like if I was ever in a situation where, you know, I needed to, you know, rely on someone like you to help me through a tough time, I would really hope that they would have that energy, that calmness, the caring, because it's it's what's needed. So you are amazing. Yeah, Thank we you. just have to have Monique on speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so before we kind of wrap things up today, is there anything else that you would like to tell us about or talk about today? Um, just that we need more nurses. So if you've ever considered it, um, you know, there are tons of options out there. It's not the bedside nurse who is, you know, changing dressing. That's not exactly what you think. It really is what you make it out to be. So um, yeah, I'll just leave you with that. Yeah, beautifully stated. I, I, you know, I know a lot of people, they also worried about, you know, oh, this is the way nurses were treated or felt like, especially during the pandemic. And, but yeah. you know, if, if we had more nurses, and more people get into the field will alleviate some of that burden, obviously. Absolutely. You know, the pandemic just was the worst case scenario at a not a good time, of course, and it just got ugly fast. But, you know, Monique, if if we could see more nurses with your attitude, it would be it'd be huge. Right. And I've, I've met a lot of lovely nurses. There's amazing nurses everywhere. And I think really at the end of the day, for anybody to get into that role, you know that in their heart, they want to help people to begin with. But some really shine at it. And you're one of those people. So I want to thank you for being part of our podcast. Uh, it's really great to have you here. It, it really is. Thank you. Thank you. This is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Thank so, you so much for coming yeah. in today, Monique. And I hope that we get a chance to talk with you again. I hope so too. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Take care.